there, folks. Male escorts. Not anything I thought I'd ever be saying on here. I think I've got one for you there, folks. I really, really do. This little piece I'm going to um, tell you about now is it's really for two sets of people. The first set is the 5, 10, 15, um, if I'm lucky, 20 people that will see this in the next 24 hours. And the other set of people is for the few hundred that I'll see it in the coming months and years as I get many, many, many more subscribers and many people will trawl through the archives and look what I've done in the past and they'll just see this and think, oh, what's that about? I'll have a look at that. They're not as lucky as the first 5, 10, 15, 20 will be because you first few will be able to download this off the TV and watch it. I'm going to tell you about a programme I seen the other night and I'll tell you now, it isn't often that I'm almost laughing all the way through it, but at the same time, I've got my chin on the floor. I, I'm, I'm, I'm open mouth. I'm thinking, what am I hearing here? I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't. I'm going to tell you about the programme now. It won't spoil it for you. You can watch this even after I've told you. This will not spoil it. You'll want to watch it because you'll think, he's got to be making that up. It can't be right the way he's saying it. Well, it is. I'll get the names wrong. I've actually made the names up because I don't know what the names of the people were and it doesn't matter. I'll get the odd fact wrong because I'm giving myself a bit of artistic licence to, to give you round about how things were working out. But watch it after you've listened to me, honestly. If you get a chance in the next few days, although you don't need to watch it because I'm going to tell it you all. But I was absolutely gobsmacked. Now, Painting the picture here, a couple of days ago, I'm up late, I'm flicking through the TV screen, see what's on before I go to bed. I'm normally up late because I'm planning things for the next day and doing this, that and the other. Anyway, I'm flicking through the screens and I flick through something and they're talking to this guy. This guy sat on a bed and I'm thinking, who is he? And this fella says to him, yes, yeah, so, uh, so you're an escort then? Yeah, oh, I am yeah, an escort, blah, 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 blah. We'll call him Pinocchio. The reason we'll call him Pinocchio is you can't believe a word that comes out of his mouth. A little bit more about him later, but he's not the one we're going to concentrate on. Then we go next, so we'll call, I'll call him Bruno, because Bruno means a lot to me. It's a name that um, me and a few friends of mine have had a laugh about over the years. This fellow's a Brazilian escort, lives in London, is Brazilian. Where Pinocchio lives, I don't know. I think they said, but I missed it. And then we'll go for Ron. Ron will be the last one we'll go for. He lives in Durham, Durham. Is it Geordie Land? I think it's somewhere Geordie Land. He's the one we're really going to concentrate on. We'll call him Ron, because he's a right Ron Dicko. He is absolutely thick. Not in a bad way, but thick. He's the one that had me chin on the floor virtually all the way through. They went with him twice. I talked to him twice, and I couldn't believe what I was hearing. I really couldn't believe what I was hearing. So anyway, they introduce them all, and then they start with old Bruno. And Bruno is... Um, He's a refined character from London, a Brazilian guy, and he doesn't only give sex, he also gives sensual massages. And they show him, where he's sat on a bed, and he's got this uh, young lady, I'm, I'm assuming she's pretty young, very, very tanned, she might even be a, of a different ethnicity, I'm not so sure. And he's sat sort of between her legs, she's got the old Alan Wickers on, they're still on, She's got her legs in the air, her legs are akimbo, and they're going back over her head. And he's in bit, he, he's a, I can only describe it, sat up to a bum really, and, and he's massaging oil into her legs, and her buttocks, and he's massaging it in, and he's talking to the camera. You don't see her face. And he's saying, oh, I give se uh, sensual, I nearly said sexual, sensual massages, I give, this is what I do, and, and I give this, and that, you know. And if at the end of it, then they want sex, then obviously, you know, I'm, I'm here to accommodate. And, and he's massaging her, and he's getting deeper and deeper into to those thighs, pretty meaty they were, and whatever else. Anyway, they're talking, and they're saying, so what kind of money do you earn? And I think he said something like, well, about three, four hundred pound an hour, and then maybe for a bit more for another hour, and then if we have full sex, more again. And he's come from a proper agency there in London. Anyway, they go to Pinocchio. I've got no real interest in him. The reason I've not is he's talking. He looks a bit thick as well. He acts and sounds a bit thick. But I think he's having us off, really. You know, Pinocchio was the one with the old, the nose that grew when he told lies. Now, this guy, 
He's doing a bit on the um, the uh, gay escort side, but he's not gay. No, he's not gay. He says he's not gay, but he escorts gay men who who like to have relationships with straight men. When we say relationships, just like to be in the company, like to talk, like to have a straight friend. They take him shopping and buy him clothes. Um, they do all these kinds of things, but no sex as such, because he's not gay. That's the nose growing again. Anyway, he says, people ring me now and again, and, and I go out and they buy clothes for me. Oh, she, oh, the bloke said, do you have another job? Well, he said, yeah, I do have. I'm a roofer. And I thought, yeah, you look more like a roofer than an escort. Not that I know what an escort looks like, but if he told me he was a roofer, I would have believed him. If he told me he was an escort, firstly, I wouldn't. And secondly, I wouldn't have thought he would have got any business. Um, but then when they go back to him later, and we're going to finish with him now, when they go back to him later, he'll let people do things on him. Uh, the, uh, the admire, that, that, when I say do things on him, that, that brings into fluid, fluid, and different places on him. He'll do things on other people, again, using fluid. I'm not going to paint much of a picture. I'm sure you can guess what I'm saying, Mr. You know, I'm, I'm sure you can guess what I'm saying. Um, he'll let him really do anything for love, but he won't do that. No, no, he won't do that because he's not gay. As I say, just the phone rings just now and again, and and, and this gay man might say, "Do you want to come and I'll buy you a, a shirt or some tra trousers?" And anyway, I thought I'm not having it off you. I'm not. I don't believe you at all. I'm not having it. But then we go to to Ron, old Ron Dicko. God, Ron is thick. He's unbelievable, Ron. We went to him. I think second to him, not third think the guy that isn't gay that really is was third we go to Ron and Ron is the only one that doesn't want to be seen on camera and he wants his voice disguised I think he's 24 25 years of age I think he works in hospitality so bar work or something like that uh, slim body looks tall reasonably well dressed could be a good looking lad but you can't tell because all the faces pixelated out and he's talking and pretty soon you realise Ron isn't dealing from a full pack. You do realise that. So, Ron, well, what do you do? Well, I'm doing some escort work. All right. And how long have you been doing it for? Oh, I've been doing it for about four or five months now. And how's it going? I've had about 24, 25 people come on, you know, to, to, you know, interested in me. They've all come at the same time. Initially, it was slow, but they're starting to come now and, and, and send stuff into my inbox. All right, he said. All right, okay then. And um, what do you charge? Now, bear in mind, old Bruno, the Brazilian, he's three, four, five hundred pounds an hour. Well, he said, I charge about about fifteen quid an hour. So I rewinds it. I thought I've got that wrong. I rewinds it. And what do you charge, uh, Ron? Well, I charge about fifteen quid an hour. I thought, I got it right, I got it right. 15 quid an hour? He says, well, I charge about 15 quid an hour. The bloke says, I think you might be underselling yourself. He said, I think I am, but I like the job. Oh, he said, right. He said, so well, what's your clientele? He said, well, they're normally about 30 to 40 years of age. Bear in mind, he's 24. All oh, right, okay then, yeah, that's fine, okay. Right, and what do you find you offer? Well, I offer whatever they want, really, you know. Full sex, I've not got a problem with it. I enjoy it. Yeah, you've already said that. Yeah, but, all right, so um, what age group are they? 30 to 40, he said, yeah, he said, I get a lot of cuckold. They went a lot of cuckold. Now, for those that don't know it, go on the internet, find out. I know what it means, but I'm not going to tell you. It's not that kind of, not, not that kind of site. And the bloke said, well, I am going to tell you, I'm saying the bloke said, doesn't that involve the husband being present? He said, yeah, the, the husband's regularly present. All right. Oh, what, and you do the old how's your father with the husband looking on? He said, aye, they seem to like it. He said, and it don't bother me. All right, he said. Oh, okay then. He said, obviously, when you're practising sex, obviously you, you, you go with safe sex. He said, well, sometimes. Sometimes. And so sometimes, well, no, he said, Many of them like the old, again, it's another word I don't want to say in here because it's not that kind of thing. 
I've got to say it, haven't I? To bareback, man, he went, oh, he said, oh, that's a bit risky, isn't it? He said, well, yeah, but that's what they tend to want. All right, he said, right. He said, but I think I'm being a bit silly, really. He said, because I never ask any of the women that I'm seeing, have they been tested? You know, have they got any, are they carrying any kind of diseases? He said, I suppose I'm taking a chance. But I do enjoy it. I thought, yeah, you've said that three times now. So anyway, they have a break and it comes back to part two. <laughs> they go back to old Bruno, the Brazilian. And again, he's massaging somebody. He loves the massaging. I think that's just a ruse. It's for the people. He really just wants sex. The young ladies really just want sex. But everyone feels better, the fact that it's not just all about sex. There's a massage involved as well. That makes it a bit more highbrow. And you've got this girl there. She's come into the house. Again, great figure, not too tall, dusky skinned. She's got a mask on. She doesn't want to be seen, but she's talking to the camera. Oh, I love old Bruno. She said he's great. Oh, when I first came here, I thought, I'm not worthy. He's too good looking. I couldn't believe he was doing this kind of work. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, I'm not going to go into more about that. And I'm not going to go back up uh, on Pinocchio. I want to concentrate on Ron. Back back to Ron in Durham. The programme's nearly ending now. And the last person they go to see is Ron. They get back to Ron. And the guy that's doing the show, I think he said, I, I visited Ron again just before we wrapped up the programme. And I think he said, and this is a bit I might get wrong, I think he said, as it turned out, I was, I was leaving to catch the train to go back to wherever I live. He said, um, I think he said he never had a lift or something. He said, um, Ron offered to take me to the station. So we're in his car, and whilst we're in his car, he gets a phone call. Oh, that before that, no, before that, of course, how can I forget? Just before that, he goes back to Ron. He said, he goes back to Ron. I'm, I do apologise, viewers, I do apologise. But it's funny, it, it gets even funnier now. Well, more unbelievable. He says, I meet up with Ron outside a bar here and we're just having a quiet drink and Ron says, he's, he's had a, got a problem in the last 24 hours and he shows me some texts. Anyway, it's off his sister. His sister's found out what Ron's doing and his sister's absolutely disgusted and she can't believe what he's doing and she says... Oh, he said, and it'll finish mum and dad off. If mum and dad find out what you're doing, they'll never go out the house again. It'll finish him off. It'd be terrible. It'd be terrible. And Ron's said to his sister, but you won't tell him. She's promised she won't tell him. She's promised you won't tell him. He says, but I'm panicking. Why are you panicking, says the presenter. He said, because she can't keep a secret to save her life. I know she's going to tell him. He said, and I don't know what I'm going to do. Anyway, with that, the producer says, so Ron offers to give me a lift back to the station. So, because I'm going home, the programme's ended. Anyway, when he's can, as we're driving along, he gets a call. He's got another booking. So, we drive to where the booking is, and I say, I'll get a taxi from there. And, we t and, he, and he's telling me about this booking. He's just got a booking. And I'm saying, what's the, what's the booking for? He said, a woman wants to see me. He said, right, yeah, okay. He said, she wants me to meet her and to get her pregnant. The presenter said, she wants you to get her pregnant. He said, aye, that's, yeah, that's what she wants to see me for. All right, he says, oh, right. And how do you feel about that? Ron says, I'm not bothered. If that's what she wants, that's what I'm here for. That's a bit strange. He said, all right, well, and you don't feel bad about it? I said, no, not at all. As I said, I enjoy it. All right. And what she paid you for that then? Because obviously there's going to, could be a possibly a baby involved. What she paid you for that then? She's not paid me anything, but she's giving me petrol money. I thought, oh my god, he's got petrol money off of the deal, right? Okay, then the blog says to me, says, and have you seen a picture of her? He said, no. You've not seen it. Do you know her age? No. So you don't know what she looks like? Oh, he said. So when you spoke to her, you've obviously spoken on the phone. How did she sound? What did she seem like? He said, we've never spoken. You've never spoken? He said, no. He said, no, she just sent an email to me inbox. He said, and you're meeting her to have sex with her, to potentially get her pregnant, all for petrol money. You don't know what she looks like, how old she is, or anything about her. He said, no. He said, why are you doing it? He said, well, I enjoy it. I think it's great. And that, folks, was the programme in a nutshell. I was fascinated. 
You may not be. It was on Channel 4 and Channel 5. Well, obviously it is. Expect nothing, nothing less. It was on like an half 11, 12 o'clock at a time when nobody other than an idiot, idiot like me would watch it or, or fall across it. And it was on a couple of nights ago. You will catch it on Catch Up. I would watch it. If only to prove that what I'm telling you is the truth. And if only to, to, to prove to you that however many people you know that you think are strange or weird or a little thick or very, very thick, there are people about that are even more thick than the ones that you think are thick. And Ron is a point in case. Ron is an absolute beauty. He is a Bobby Dazzler. I'll tell you what, I just... I don't know. I'd say sometimes words fail me, but they never tend to, viewers. I've always got something to say, as you're hearing from this. I do hope you've lasted throughout the course of this video. I do hope you've watched it all. I hope you watch Ron and his uh, cohorts, and I hope you find it as funny or as jaw-dropping as I did. It's the weirdest thing I've seen in a long time. But Ron, honestly, Ron, you need to get a life. You've got a problem, my son. You have got a problem, and I think you need help. And if you thought your mum and dad were worried about you doing a bit of escort work, they'll be a lot more worried if they see that programme and realise what you're getting up to. It's work that's worse than escort work, sir. That is that is like weird. Petrol money! Petrol money! Good God man!